Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going into shape layers and creating this progress bar. Now this progress bar is really simple to make and I'll show you exactly how to do it using only shape layers. We're going to do some expressions and make it all kind of run together smoothly. And But I do want to tell you that I actually have a brand new custom effect out. It's called progress bars and it'll do this and so much more. So if you stick around till the end of the video, I'm gonna show off this new preset of mine, this custom effect, and all that it can do. And, and of course, it's available right now to download if you want. So to get started, I have a brand new composition. Doesn't really matter the scale or the size of it. Just pick one. I've got a blue solid for the background just so we can see easier. Now I'm gonna make sure that I don't have anything selected. So unselect the layer. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Doesn't matter the size, but make it long and skinny like a bar. And then I'm going to go into the shape layer. Now when you create the shape layer, it has its contents and then there's rectangle one. And I'm going to come in here to the path. I'm going to unlock that. I'm going to give this say a thousand by 50. That looks about right. And I can go ahead and lock that down again. Now next I want to take this and I want to name this. Now, shape layers, there's lots that you can do in here, and there's this whole kind of world in here. And if you take a look um, in the ad, I have groups, different shapes. I can fill, stroke, gradients, all sorts of things you can do, repeaters, merge pass, offset, um, that you can do all inside of a shape layer. So you can really add a lot to this and make kind of a cool shape all in one layer and it's nice to do it all in one layer because then in when I add like effects or layer styles I don't have to add them to multiple layers it's all in a single layer it's easy to hide easy to move and of course you can turn them into presets that way as well so this first rectangle this is going to be the bar the main bar so I'm gonna change this to progress bar and I'm gonna duplicate this let's move it down to the bottom I'm going to call this back as just the background. And I'm going to take this back bar and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So the size, I want this to be 60 by 1010. And let's zoom in close, maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm just increasing by 10. So let's go 70 by 1020. So I can even come in here and give this, you know, a color. Let's have the fill maybe a different color. Let's do a dark gray. Okay. And then that's that. We're going to leave this just pretty much the way it is for now. We're going to add a little bit more to it later. So let's go back to the progress bar and let's take off the stroke. And then what I want to do is I want to be able to scale this up. So if I come in to the effect and go to expression controls, there's a slider control. And this is where I can kind of build my own little controls for this. So let's go into the rectangle path and into size. I'm going to option, hold down option or alt on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch and it brings up the expression control dialog box. And what I want to do is write a, a quick little expression. And so I'm going to just take this, delete it, and I'm going to do a left square bracket. Then I'm going to use this pick whip grab that and since this goes to from 0 to 100 I want this to be scaling from 0 to 1000 I need to times it by 10 because 100 times 10 equals a thousand then a comma 50 and then close it with another square bracket and then with a semicolon now what this does is when I scale from 0 to 100 well, that is the progress bar, except for it's not in the right spot. So this is where we have to have another expression. So now let's come over to into the transform. So let's go ahead and close that down. And we need to change the position. So we're going to option or alt click on the position, and we're going to write a little expression. And what we do is, again, the left square bracket. And then what we need to do is we need to position this since this is 1,000 pixels across, and this is right in the middle, I need to go all the way over to the left. And so I'm going to hit minus 500, and then I need to add to it. 
And what I need to add to it is this slider. So this slider goes from 0 to 100. So what I need to do is I need to take half of this, so 0 to 1000, which is 500, and I need to take that as a fraction of 100. So 500 divided by 100 is 5. So it's a little bit weird math, but that's how you do it. So I'm going to pick whip this slider and then just times that by 5 and then comma 0 square bracket semicolon and then just let's test this out. And there we have a slider going from 0 to 100 in the right spot. Now the reason why I did it this way using this transform um, and the size instead of um, I could have gone in here and, and just scaled it and set the anchor point over there. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to take advantage of this roundness. So I can come in here and change the roundness of this. So that's pretty cool. So say if I wanted to come in and have another slider that adjusted the roundness. So let's come in here. Let's label these. Roundness and this top one would be progress. So from 0 to 100, I need to go from 0 to 50. So on this rectangle, the optimal roundness is 50. So when I'm at 50, that's as round as it can get. Everything past that just doesn't do anything. So since 50 is half of 100, I just pick whip this. So Option or Alt click on the stopwatch, grab my roundness slider, and then divide it by 2. And then what we have here is a slider that changes the roundness. Now I also want to do that to the back slider as well. This one's a little bit different because it's not the same size. This is set at 70. So let's come into the roundness, pick whip the slider, and then we want to times this by 0.7. And then now they will work together. So when I go down to around I can come in here and I've got this progress bar. Now the last thing I want to do is here at the end, it's looking a little bit funny. You can see it's kind of coming in over the edge and I want to fix that. And so we're going to do a, we're going to do another expression on the scale. It's going to be an if else statement. And it's really kind of a simple way of doing this. So I'm going to come in here onto scale. I'm going to option or alt click on it. And first I need to set a variable. And so I'm gonna set the variable of prog for progress. So just type out prog equals. And I'm gonna grab this progress slider and end with a semicolon. So there's my variable. And now I'm gonna write a quick if statement. So just type in if space. Then we need to do a parentheses. And inside of these parentheses, I'm going to do prog is less than two then I need to do now what's a curly bracket. So I'm going to go to the next line and curly bracket, which is where the square bracket is, but you hold down shift. And this is what I need to happen. Okay, now I need to write another uh, variable and I'm going to call this one scale, but just SCL equals prog times 50. End with a semicolon and then close that off with a curly bracket. And so what this is doing is when this hits two, it's going to apply 2 times 50 to that variable. But when it goes down to 1, it's going to be at 50. When it goes down to a half, it's going to be at 25. So it's going to scale from 100 down to 0 in the space of 2 down to 1. So it's going to be a quick scale. So after this first if, then we need to do an else. So go to the next line, right? else. And then space, and then a curly bracket. And this is what happens when it's over 2, and which is... I want the scale to equal prog, and with a semicolon and a curly bracket. Now we need to output uh, the scale. So do a square bracket, type scale, comma, scale, end with a square bracket and a semicolon, and that should be good to go. And so what we see here is that I messed up. So what I did is I accidentally, I don't want this to be set to prog here. So I'm going to come back, easy to fix. Since I use variables, I could just come in here and set this to 100. And that's exactly what I want now. Messed up there. So as it gets down, it's going to scale down there. 
It's kind of cool. Now, in order to make this a little bit nicer, um, because I don't want it to kind of do that when it's square, but I do when it's a little bit rounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this variable right here, this two. So let's write another variable in here. And this would be, we'll call this round, and have this equal the roundness slider divided by 100. And then right here at two, we're going to time this by round. And then this 50, let's put this in parentheses and divide that by round. So when it's square, it's not going to scale down at all. When it's really round, it'll start scaling down sooner. And when it's somewhere in between, it'll scale down, but not till, see, we can see I'm at 0.75 here and it still hasn't started scaling yet. And there it goes. So that's just a little thing to kind of make this a little bit more dynamic. Let's take a look at this whole thing. So this is pretty cool. Now, say you want to come in and change the colors, that's easy enough. So just come into your contents um, under the progress bar. Your fill is your color. And under the back, the fill is going to be this inner color. And then the stroke is going to be the outer color. And here is just a general progress bar. So really simple to do. And um, hopefully you weren't too confused. We did a lot of uh, shape layer stuff here and there's so much more you can do, but that is a good start on doing a progress bar. Now, um, I was talking at the beginning about my progress bar preset. Now this is really, really cool. You can see what this can do and there's a couple of sliders here. And um, But I wanna show you what I've built as far as it, you know, I hate to call this a preset because it's really more than that. It's really like a full plugin. And here's what it looks like. And if I click on the shape layer, I've got this nice controller here. And there's all sorts of stuff I can do to this. So there's, of course, my progress. Let's zoom in on this. I can set this up. So I've got thickness, how thick, roundness. I can add slant to it. The padding, which is around that side. And then there's a stroke on the outside of it. So I can really come in here and really create just a really cool looking progress bar. And there's a million different ways of combinations of doing this. Come in and change the color. This outer color, which is currently white. So let's do it kind of a blue inner color. Maybe a dark gray. The stroke color. Let's go straight black. And, you know, there's all the stuff I can do. I've got the shading on here where I can go from flat to more of a, you know, a beveled bubble look. And then I've got this flare you can add to it, which is I can have this progress button. So, and I can have the button size. This is kind of looking like a YouTube progress bar with that button there. Um, I also have these stripes. And as I play through this, you'll notice that the stripes are moving backwards. So that's pretty cool. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you is uh, right here, it says this progress anchor. And this um, is one of my favorite features of this. Say I wanted to anchor something right to the end of that progress bar. Well, that's what this progress anchor is. So let's add a new null object. And I'm gonna open up the position on that null object. Let's come into the effect and go to the progress anchor. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna option or alt click on the stopwatch and I'm gonna link it to that progress anchor. And it's in the same spot because that's exactly where it was. But when I come in here now, I move this, you see that anchor, you see that null is going to be connected right to it. Now it doesn't even matter if I come in here and rotate this it's going to still connect right to the end of that progress bar. So that's pretty cool. And what I can do with that is, well, let's bring in some text. Doesn't matter what I say. Let's open up the text source. Let's come into the shape layer, go into the effect, and I'm going to 
option click and pick whip the text source to the progress. Let's take that text and bring it down a little bit. Let's move it right to where we need to. And then I'm going to parent this text to the null. And now watch what happens. That's pretty cool. So really kind of a dynamic bar graph. There's so much you can do with this. Um, it can be round, square, slanty, doesn't matter. So go check out this preset. It's available on cinemaspice.net. Just click on the link in the description or click right here on this annotation. It'll take you right to where you can get this. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.